Hey guys, my name is Sid and welcome to another vlog. So today I thought I'd talk about my latest purchase and that is the DJI Spark. So if you guys know, I love my drones and this DJI Spark is the latest from DJI. DJI probably makes the best consumer drones in the world and this is what they've come up with. It's, it's a really interesting drone because uh, this is the first time something so capable has been uh, made quite this small. Yeah, I thought I'd share some information about this drone because it's probably one of the most accessible drones out there right now in terms of price. This costs about $500 to buy and uh, you can control it using your phone. It's got a lot of features for a $500 drone. So let's just go over a few of the things that this drone does. First of all, this drone is ultra, ultra small. Like this is the smallest drone that I've seen that can shoot 1080p video with uh with a gimbal in it so this has actually got super smooth footage very similar to what you see from other dji products like the mavic now this gimbal is a two axis gimbal and it's not a three axis gimbal uh like the mavic and the phantoms have but still it is very capable so the gimbal out here will uh move up and down and uh it'll move um, you know in this axis but it doesn't move in this axis the footage on this looks super smooth uh, just like the bigger drones. The way they do that is actually that this has the same sensor size as the Mavic and even though the Mavic does 4K, this only does 1080p and what they've done is they've actually cropped the sensor for stabilization for that third axis and the result is pretty amazing like uh, you will not be wanting for stabilization. It does get choppy a little bit but uh, it's good enough for um, you know footage for a vlog. As you see, the propeller design for this drone is very similar to what they have on the Mavic as well. So they fold down real small and uh, you can just, um, you know, fold it up like this. And you can pretty much put the drone in its case this way itself. Unfortunately, the arms don't fold, but uh, this is about the size almost of a Mavic that's folded up already. One sec. For a quick size comparison, here's the Spark ready to fly pretty much and here is the Mavic Pro uh, which is all folded up uh, let me just unfold this guy and show you real quick okay. there we go uh, this is the Mavic unfolded so that's the Mavic unfolded and this is the Spark so you can see the Spark is significantly smaller than the Mavic uh, I'll do some b-roll over this, um, you know, where you can see the size exactly. But uh, yeah, it's significantly smaller. Mavic is actually a much more sophisticated drone. Uh, it's actually got a different uh, uh, radio technology in it called OcuSync, which actually allows it to travel like seven kilometers away. I think it's four miles, seven kilometers, something like that. But yeah, it can fly a really, really long distance away. Plus it has a 4K camera on it. The Spark is actually, uh, it runs on Wi-Fi technology, 1080p, but it's half the price, $500, but it does not come with a remote, whereas the Mavic does. So no remote with the Spark, but I would highly suggest if you buy the Spark, get the Flymore package. The Flymore package comes with a remote control and two extra batteries. And that's going to set you back about 700 to 750 dollars depending on where you are in dubai it's about 750 dollars so yeah that's the spark compared to the mavic so just for fun let's compare the spark to my phantom 3 standard in terms of size so yeah this is the phantom 3 standard without the propellers on it and this is the spark so like it's incredibly small so this thing is as capable as the DJI standard 3 uh, in almost every way in terms of transmission distance in terms of picture quality and it's this size so that's how far DJI has come in the last three years in terms of drone technology plus this has a bunch of other features like obstacle avoidance in the front so when you fly close to something it's actually going to detect it and stop the drone from crashing into it so I'm pressing front uh, I won't go ahead because the sensor sees me and uh, it stops the drone from going ahead. So if I move a little bit back, what is stopping? Apart from that, it also has a better GLONASS GPS system. So you get a better lock-on onto your GPS and it, it finds more satellites more quickly. 
This thing also charges via USB. So if you see at the back over here, there's actually a little compartment that you can open up right where the Spark logo is. So here you've got a micro USB slot and you charge the drone that way. So you don't need like a bulky separate charger. You can pretty much uh, charge this off any USB, uh, you know, battery or you plug it into the wall. Uh, anything that will charge your smartphone that has a micro USB will probably charge this thing as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the only limitation I feel of this drone is its 16 minute battery life, which is a bit worse than the standard. But apart from that, um, you know, it has a two axis uh, stabilization uh, for the camera versus the three axis for the DJI standard. But otherwise, I would say this is now the best beginner drone uh, available from DJI. Another really cool feature about the Spark is that you can actually you can launch it from your park. This is something we didn't have with the Mavic that's now new for the Spark. You can pretty much hold it like this, hit the button over here twice and it'll detect your face and like take off from your hand immediately. And then you can use hand gesture control to actually move the drone around and position it and then use gestures to uh, enable recording. So you can fly this using your phone or you can fly it using the controller, which is not included in the box. Remember, you have to buy that separately. And you can also use gesture control. So you can launch this off your hand, control it with your hand itself, uh, wave to make it go back about 10 feet, and then uh, use this gesture to take a picture. So basically you don't need a remote to fly this guy or take pictures with it, which is very cool. So to enable gesture control, they actually have a sensor in the front over here. You can see it right here. Uh, you will see two red dots come on when the drone is actually flying but uh, that actually is a 3D depth sensor. So it knows how far you are away from the drone and how far your hand is away from the drone and that's what allows it to do the gesture control. It's also got something called tripod mode where uh, when you put it in tripod mode, the drone will be super stable. So like you won't even see it move a little bit in the, sky, uh, in the air. And uh, when you do move it with the controller, it moves absolutely slowly. And the point of that is to take better shots, uh, especially if you want long exposures or something like that, you can do it with the Spark. There we go. And now you can see. But now it's in follow mode, so it's actually tracking me. And now check this out. Just using the tablet to view what the drone is seeing, but it's actually following me around automatically as I walk. Another thing that the Spark has that even the Mavic doesn't is some new flight modes. The first one's called Rocket. So what Rocket does is uh, it'll detect your face and then just fly straight up with the camera pointing down. So that looks really cool. It's a very epic shot. Uh, you know, all these all these camera modes are really epic shots that you probably wouldn't be able to fly very easily if you don't know how to fly a drone well. So it makes flying this for beginners really cool. Second one is called the Droney. So the Droney is actually gonna have the drone go back further away from you and fly upwards. So that's another epic looking shot where like it's uh, where you it's probably like zoomed in onto you and then it goes out and you see like a much wider uh, angle and it gives a better sense of where you are. Then you have the circle which is basically going to take a 360 video around you and the last one which is probably the coolest is spiral. So what it'll do is it'll turn around you 360 and slowly move further away and higher up. You're gonna get some epic video out of that. I just got this thing yesterday and I haven't got a chance to try all the modes as yet, but from other videos that I've seen, it looks pretty epic. Let's talk a few specs about the Spark. So as I said before, 1080p video at 30 frames per second. It's got a 12 megapixel camera for stills. It's got a new mode called shallow focus as well, which will give you that depth uh, effect similar to what the iPhone 7 Plus does. It's also got the obstacle avoidance system and the face detection system built in. So in terms of flight time, you get about 16 minutes of flight time in the air, which is okay. In my experience, I've tried it a couple of times. It's more like 12 minutes, 12 to 10 minutes. It's not the best, but uh, it's not bad. I would highly recommend though getting more than one battery. In the three control modes, when you have it in uh, gesture control mode, 
then you get a distance of 10 feet, range of 10 feet. Uh, if you're using the phone as your remote, then uh, you get about 50 meters of uh, flight distance. If you buy the remote for this park, you'll get two kilometers of distance. The remote also unlocks the top speed of the drone, which is 50 kilometers per hour. And I've seen some videos where this drone does insanely quick things because of its size. It, uh, it actually acts almost like a racing drone. So it looks really fast and I think it should be really fun to fly. I wanted to get the fly more combo, but unfortunately it was not available. So you guys might be wondering why I bought this drone since I already have the standard. Now, the thing is that I feel really awkward to fly the Phantom 3. Uh, it's pretty big as you saw. And then when you take off, like everybody around you will really notice it and uh, you get a lot of uh, attention. Whereas, uh, Whereas this thing is like super tiny and uh, you can launch it from your hand and probably nobody's even going to notice when you fly it. But it looks kind of like a toy even though it isn't and that's what I like about this the most. So I want to tell you guys that I'm actually going on a holiday. I'll be going to Portugal and Italy and I wanted to carry my drone with me but that thing is just so huge. I need a separate backpack to carry it and this I can just put in my camera bag and whip it out and take a drone shot wherever I want without attracting too much attention. That's the main thing for me. I don't want to attract too much attention when I fly a drone and this thing uh, I think is the perfect drone for me. So I really wanted to get the fly more combo which gives you the remote control, two extra batteries and prop cards. A great deal at $200 more. Uh, I would highly recommend everybody buying the Spark get that combo. It's, uh, it's worth it. The $200 is worth it. Uh, the issue for me was that it's just not available in Dubai as yet and getting the fly more combo would have meant that I would not have been able to take this for my trip to Portugal and Italy. So that's why I uh, just bought the drone. I think guys DJI has done it again. I didn't think uh, they'd be able to push the boundaries of making drones so fast. But man, it's just been six months since the Mavic came out and this thing is half the size. I can't wait to see what DJI does next, but yeah, I'm super happy with the Spark so far. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like button, leave a comment, and do subscribe to watch more videos like this. See ya. Dude, the phone's overheated. Huh? And now I can't control the drone. Let, let, me, let me see this, hold on. <laughs> Your phone. Yeah, <laughs> it is 50 degrees in the bottom. Damn. What do I do? Oh, no way. I mean, it's landing. Is it? Is it? And that's a wrap. <laughs>